next production of rotating magnetic field and torque let's see how the rotating magnetic field is created in synchronous motor and then in alternator so let us suppose we are considering the case of synchronous motor and take a 6 watt stator and let this be the R phase winding and let this be Y and B so exactly opposite R dash and B, B dash and Y, Y dash and for this synchronous motor it needs the electrical energy input so 3 phase supply let this be the R phase and uh, after 120 degrees Y phase and further 120 degrees B phase so like this and like this so consider these instants and at this instant R is positive Y and B negative and in this case y is positive and r and b negative and in this case b positive and r and y are negative let us for positive take cross convention and for negative take dot convention ok so here in positive instant R positive means cross convention and uh, Y and B are negative so dot convention and exactly the opposite end of the conductor will have other direction of current so and this is cross and this is cross to find the pole formation on this data just simply apply cot screw rule as it is dot the flux direction will be anti clockwise as it is cross clockwise direction and as it is dot the flux direction is anti clockwise anti clockwise so the resultant will be anti clockwise and apply here similarly so this is cross so clockwise and this is cross so clockwise and this is dot anti clockwise and the resultant is clockwise so if you observe here the resultants are adding means this portion is acting as north pole and this portion is acting as south pole so the resultant field is towards this fr ok let us take the resultant field as fr now consider the second instant so for second instant So R, R dash, Y, Y dash, B, B dash. And for second instant, Y is positive and R, B are negative. So Y positive means cross R, B and R negative. So R, R dash is cross and this is cross and this is stop. Now we observe the resultant field. Okay, anti-clockwise and this is clockwise so here this portion is receiving the field means this portion is acting as north pole and this portion is acting as south pole so the resultant field is like this fr and consider the third instant ok b positive and y and r are negative So B positive cross and R and Y are negative dot. So this is dot and this is cross and this is cross. Now observe the resultant. This is anti-clockwise and this is clockwise. So this portion is receiving the resultant field means this portion is acting as north pole and this portion is acting as south pole means the resultant is like this so from this what you have to observe is for a phase sequence of RYB 
the rotating magnetic field here is clockwise and here for a given time angle rotor rotates equal space angle that implies rotor rotates at synchronous speed whereas in case of alternator alternator requires the mechanical power input and that mechanical power input is given to the rotor through the shaft by the prime mover and the speed of prime mover is governed by the speed governor and that speed governor will maintain the speed at synchronous speed so prime mover rotates at speed synchronous speed and so that as it is coupled to the rotor this rotor will also rotate at speed ns so that the resultant effort will also rotate at synchronous speed and the resultant field is given by 1.5 times the main magnetic field mm as the resultant field is rotating at the speed maintained by the speed governor that is synchronous speed so as this resultant field is cutting the conductors at synchronous speed emf will be induced and the output of alternator will have a frequency of nsp by 120 so now let's see how torque is produced i'm discussing in case of synchronous motor for the rotor to rotate unidirectional torque must be produced must be produced for rotor to rotate if bidirectional torque is produced then the rotor will not rotate because opposite torques are acting and the rotor will be at standstill like that so in order to make the rotor rotate unidirectional torque must be produced so for unidirectional torque both repulsion and attraction of magnetic poles must be in the same direction then only Uni directional torque will be produced. So, for the production of unidirectional torque, it is compulsory that both repulsion and attraction of magnetic poles must be in the same direction. And here, the repulsion and attraction between magnetic poles means the repulsion and attraction between the scatter poles and rotor poles that is repulsion between scatter and rotor poles then similarly attraction between scatter and rotor poles now let us consider a four pole serial pole alternator and whose input is given by prime mover let it be rotating in clockwise direction so that rotor also will rotate in clockwise direction and let us suppose these are the conductors consideration and let this be south pole let this be north south and north so obviously by applying Fleming's right hand rule find the direction of induced EMF in this conductor so as we know that to find the direction of induced EMF 
it, we need motion direction and field direction. So field direction is downwards because it is south pole, okay, and motion direction. So we are taking the reference of rotor. So motion direction will be opposite to the rotor direction. So motion direction, then obviously the direction of induced EMF will be outwards. So similarly here, cross, dot, and cross. And now remember the concept of poles formation of this data. So this is anti-clockwise, this is clockwise, which implies this portion acts as a north pole, okay, and this pole acts as south pole, and this portion as north pole, and this portion as south pole. Uh, consider this as an MMF. Armature MMF will be like this, and the resultant A gap MMF is FR, where FR is is equal to Fm plus Fk. Okay, magnetic field MMF and armature field MMF. And Fr is the A gap MMF. And uh, the angle between the main field MMF and A gap MMF is called load angle, which is represented by delta. And whereas the angle between the air gap MMF and main field MMF is called top angle. And it is known that for the prime over top as input, exactly in opposite direction, the electromagnetic top is produced. And from this, what you can note that the main field MMF leads the a gap MMF and A gap MMF leads the armature MMF, which implies armature MMF lags behind main field MMF in alternators. And the other point to be remembered is in alternators. Electromagnetic torque developed will be in opposite direction to the prime over torque. So, from this, the points to be remembered is here that air gap MMF lags behind the main field MMF and Delta is the power angle, also called load angle, and lambda is called as top angle. Now consider the case of synchronous model. For synchronous motor, electrical energy is the input. Means for in case of alternator, current is delivered, and whereas in case of synchronous motor, current is received. The machine receives electrical energy. And consider the same cases as in case of alternator. So this is south pole, north pole, south pole, north pole, and let us be the conductor, and this be the conductor, and this be the conductor. And this be dot, this is cross, this is dot, and this is cross. And now, let us consider this conductor. So here we have to find the direction of rotation of rotor. So for finding the direction of rotation of rotor, here we have to find the direction of motion of conductor. So in previous case of concepts, what we have decided that the direction of motion of conductor is taken as opposite direction to the Rotor direction. So here, if you can find the direction of motion of conductor, then we can obviously determine the direction of rotation of rotor. So to find the direction of motion, we have to apply Fleming's left hand rule. So what it says means stretch your left hand thumb index and 
middle finger perpendicular to each other then the direction of thumb will indicate the direction of force and index finger will indicate the direction of field and middle finger will indicate the direction of current or induced EMF. So apply here Fleming's left hand rule then it is found that the direction of the motion of conductor is 20 volts. Then we can obviously say that the direction of rotation of rotor is opposite means anti-clockwise. So the electromagnetic torque developed is this direction and from this case what we have seen that for this direction of rotation these are the resultant fields and for this direction of rotation the resultant fields will be in this direction. So this is the armature MMF and resultant will be the A gap MMF and the angle between the main field MMF and armature MMF is called as torque angle and the angle between main field MMF and a gap MMF is called power angle or load angle which is represented by delta and from this case what you have to note that here the armature MMF leads A gap MMF and A gap MMF leads main field MMF which implies main field lags behind armature MMF whereas in case of alternator the armature MMF lags behind the main field MMF and the other point to be noted here is that the electromagnetic torque developed will be in same direction of rotor rotation whereas in this case the electromagnetic torque developed will be in opposite direction to the rotor rotation whereas in this case the electromagnetic torque developed will be along the same direction of rotor rotation okay these are the differences which you have to note so from these two what you have to note that here the armature MMF lags behind the main field MMF whereas in case of synchronous motor main field MMF lags behind the armature MMF and the other point to be noted is here that the electromagnetic torque developed in case of alternator will be in opposite direction to the rotor rotation whereas here electromagnetic torque developed in the synchronous motor will be in along the same direction of rotor rotation 